Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about zombifying um, yourselves with your self-portrait. I already talked about in class choosing a background image. I also talked about how to think about taking your photograph so that you have the best chance of it matching up with your background, um, namely discussing lighting, light source, etc. So, um, and then once you mask yourself and bring it into your background. We've got some other things that we need to do to it before we actually start working on the face. Um, notice here I have a mask on my portrait. Um, I'm not going to go over how to do that. We've done that multiple times. You should know how to do that already. Okay, but one thing that I did notice and I want to teach you is sort of a cool trick and you guys might have fun with this is how to import brushes. So there are a bunch of free brushes online that you can get. And the reason I want to um, show you this is because I can't stand what happened to my hair. Photopea does not do a very good job um, when we go to refine edge with hair, not as good as Photoshop anyway. So I want to make that look a little bit more um, transparent slash wispy. And I actually did use one of my own brushes to create that because it really looked worse than that at the beginning. But I'm going to try something and I think this is a skill or technique that you guys should learn anyway. So um, I'm going to go to free adobe hairbrush okay and the first site that comes up is hair free brushes and that's not really what we're looking for i think they're selling hair on that site so i don't think that's what we want the second one which is creativeblog.com which is a very popular um, creative slash photoshop site it says natural photoshop brushes the best free photoshop dot 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 65 best free photoshop brushes so these should all be free sometimes i'm not always sure but the first one 23 Hairbrush, hairbrush set looks pretty cool, but it looks like it's more meant for clicking and dragging and creating these sort of long wisps with basic settings. That may not be what we're looking for for our mask. The second one, which is fur brushes, and I look at the examples over here. It's like the creator just painted onto a black canvas so you can see what these look like. I think those might, especially something like this, might give us a great opportunity to improve our mask. So. Um, I'm going to go to download here, and I have not done this yet because I want to make sure I go through the process just like you guys might have to. Um, and we have download right here. Obviously, we don't want to click that because it's an ad, and people try to trick you like that all the time, so I'm staying away from that. But I am going to go to download here, and actually that little pop-up says download brushes. So I always actually go down um, on these websites and make sure I'm clicking on the correct download so that um, bad things don't happen to my computer. But anyway, we're going to go to download. And it's going to want to download it as a zip. I'm going to let it go right into, eh, let's, let's take it into our project folder, zombie folder. And fur brushes by Nathy, whoever that is. There's a nat Natty, I don't know. It doesn't matter. So now I'm going to navigate over to where I downloaded that using my Windows Explorer. If you're on a Chromebook, hopefully you know how to organize files by now. Um, but I need to go into... where is it? Oh, there's recent files. Oh, let's do that. Double click on that. And here is the .abr file. Now, I'm not 100% sure what .abr stands for, but I'm going to guess it stands for Adobe Brush. A-B-R. Okay, and I'm going to click on that, and I'm just going to copy it. And I'm going to go back to my main directory, my main folder, and go paste. So I don't have to necessarily always unzip things. You can copy and paste out of that. Hopefully you guys have the ability to unzip files. I'm not sure. Everybody can be a little bit different. So now we have fur br brushes by nathy.abr. And then we're going to go into, nope, not zoom. We're going to go into photo P. And in here, I'm going to grab my brush. And I'm going to click on this little option up here, this little arrow. And I, now I can see all these brushes. As you can see, I've downloaded a bunch before. Um, you can always also create brushes in Photopea and Photoshop. We're not going to go through that process right now. But if I click on this other arrow here, it should say load.abr. So if I go to load.abr, I'll look at my zombie project. And I'm hoping this works. Otherwise, I have to start this recording all over. And I'm going to go to open. Load fur brushes. Also, next time you use Photopea, yeah, let's let's keep them in there forever. So brushes added. Now, if I right click on my window with my brush again, I have my paintbrush. I'm going to scroll down and to see if they actually got added. There they are. These are all little brushes here. So um, my hair is sort of interesting. I'm actually going to 
let's try 539. It comes in pretty big. Notice how that is. If I go into my mask, and let's just test it out for fun with black, and I click on that, well, now I've got hair going across my face. But you can see how effective this can be. Um, I'm going to make it a lot smaller. And I actually think I want to rotate the brush. So you also have the ability to rotate the brush if you go to the brushes window. And I like to increase spacing because you can see the little preview down at the bottom. This is a preview of that brush. So spacing will allow you to see the actual angle of the brush. I'm going to rotate this and I think it goes backwards. I don't want it that way. I got to go all the way around to about there. And if I take this out, you can see that you can see a preview of that. So I like that right there. I'm going to bring the size down a little bit. And again, I'm just going to test this. Now, this might be a little bit too much. I don't know yet. Um, but if I go in here and start doing something like that, I get these little wisps. If I zoom all the way out, it's going to be like, yeah, that hair looks, it's better. Trust me, it's better, but it's still not great. So I'm going to do both of those. What I'm going to do now is rather than use pure black, I'm going to use like a mid-tone gray, which will only take away half of the pixels in my um Oops, in my mask. I gotta make sure I'm in the mask. Oh, you know, it's gonna bring my mask back. Oh, that's not cool. That's okay, let's go to black. So as you saw when I painted there, it brought back um, my background. <clears throat> Excuse me, my background, which is gray also, which is not something what we want. So I'm gonna go back, use black. It'll be okay. I'm gonna make this smaller. I'm just gonna go on the very edge on the tips of that hair, and maybe even a little bit up here. So we're just breaking up those lines a little bit using a brush, maybe even here. Um, then we zoom out. It still looks a little goofy, but um, it's a little bit better than it was. So anyway, play with those brushes. You can download and import any kind of brush that you want. There's a ton in here. They're pretty cool. Um, this guy actually paints fur, which is, I don't know if it's a guy. It could be a female, not sure, but there's some pretty cool stuff in there. So if you go to creativeblog.com, you can find a bunch of these brushes. So I guess the overall idea really is let's make sure you guys get really good masks for your for your self-portrait for your zombies. Um, mine is okay. I'm, I'm good enough with it to go forward, which is what I'm going to do now. Now, don't get confused with all the layers I've had. I've already done a bunch of work. Some of these things you should already know about. Um, but what we want to do is we want to try to match up our background with our face. So to me, this looks okay just by default, but I always want to play with levels, hue, and saturation. So we want to play with the levels adjustment layer. Remember, if I go to background, copy, my, I always copy my background, by the way, so that's a copy. And I click on this icon, we can create an adjustment layer in here. And I've done that already with levels. I always like to start with levels because I really want to get my darks matching the other darks. So I want the darks from the background to match the darks from my portrait. I want the lights from my background to match the lights. And I want the in-between grayscales to be pretty close so things look like they actually belong. Um, so I did a levels adjustment on my background. You can see when I show it that the darks are a little bit darker. Um, and then I did a hue saturation. I think it's too brilliant. So I wanted to take some of that down um, some of the saturation down. And if I click on my hue adjustment later and go to a, a layer and go to properties, you can actually see the numbers that I use minus 49. This is going to be different for everybody depending on the images that you've chosen. Okay, so then the next thing I wanted to do was do the, the same adjustment on my on my portrait. Um, but one thing I, I did and that you guys don't know about yet is I turned I duplicated my layer and I turned my layer into what's called a smart object. Okay, and this is really a Photoshop thing. And people, if you watch tutorials, say, hey, convert to smart object. Unconvert, convert to smart object. So what I did was, again, I duplicated it. And I'll do it again just so you guys can see. Control J to duplicate my layer. If I right click on layer one, copy, and go convert to smart object, we lose our mask. Okay, which is fine, which is why I duplicate this in case I need to go back and play with the mask. Um, but now, when I do something like add a sharpen, which is unsharp mask in this case, to my layer. So if I go to filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. And I did this because I noticed my face was a little bit blurry. It just wasn't a great photograph that I took to begin with. So I wanted to sharpen it up a little bit. And I go to unsharp mask. 
we get all these options. Okay, and I'm just going to go crazy with this. Yeah, let's go. Uh, yeah, let's make it look really awful. Okay, but turning it into a smart object first, when we add a filter like that, it creates a smart filter. Okay, which means we can still, after we close this, we save it out, and then we open it up again tomorrow, we can still either delete the smart filter, get rid of it, we can alter it. Um, if I double click on my unsharp mask, I can now fix that. Okay, so again, we're editing our work and we're being non-destructive about editing our work, which is what I did in layer one copy here. So I'm just going to delete that example layer. We're going to go back up to layer one copy. I'm going to hide my original layer. All right, so what I did again as I'm looking at this arbitrarily going, well, let's play with levels, which again I did. You can see when I show it, um, my face gets a little bit darker. I think that does a better job of matching the darks in my hair my eyebrows, my eyes with the darks that are now in my background scene. I also think I got, I have a little bit too much um, vibrance, just like the background. So I took some of that down. Um, and again, we're working towards being a zombie. So eventually what I'm going to try to have is more of a pale pasty face, but this is a good start. Just doing a hue saturation on that. Um, so now our video is getting a little bit too long. I'm going to stop there. Uh, so make sure the again the big keys are get a good mask download and install brushes if you want to if that will help um, with painting some of that mask match lights and darks with your background and foreground try to match blur and sharpening if you can okay match color so we don't want something that's black and white on something that's super vibrant all right so these techniques will at least get you started on the right foot. So that's day one. Tomorrow we'll get into how to change my eyes into zombie eyes.